JJ, welcome back. I have actually lost count of episodes, but I think it's 28. Pretty sure you're right. 28 <laughs> episodes in. We're still counting the episodes. <laughs> this is the podcast We Were Gamers, where JJ and Andrew sit down and we talk about what we loved playing, what we love playing now, and uh, generally what gets in the way of playing video games. And yep. uh, yeah, we try and stay in touch with each other because we live super far apart. Yeah. That's a pretty good, solid, quick way to say it i think yeah that was a really good succinct intro that's nice yeah 28 times maybe we can get a little better at one part of this <laughs> yeah god knows everything else has just gone straight downhill man <laughs> they, all the you know andrew's moved to a new laptop which i'm sure we'll talk about and there's just been a whole bunch of stuff uh i have a funny anecdote uh to recount here uh andrew have you ever heard of a ganglion cyst uh, yeah, I have. Uh huh. Do you know what those are commonly called? Give them, give them a name. The phrase that is used uh, and has been used to be by medical doctors, multiple medical doctors, is Bible cyst. Do we have to continue this? This is yes. going to get gross. It's not that gross. <laughs> uh, so like you know. I anyway, uh, I uh, I I think I had unclear if I still have it or not. Uh, one of these on my wrist. Uh, and I was out with some friends uh this past weekend and uh, several of these friends happened to be medical doctors and like you know i was like rolling my wrist a bunch because like it, i don't know i do that as a tick sometimes and they noticed and like looked at it they're like oh you have one of these things it's like a little bump on my wrist you know they're like y we could fix that and i'm like okay what <laughs> like oh yeah it's this thing they you know spout off all this medical stuff and like you can either drain it or you hit it really hard with a book. <laughs> I, I just stare at them. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, they used to call these Bible cysts because that's the fix. You lay your hand flat on a piece of surface and you hit it really hard with a book to pop it. Oh, my God. And this is I, I saw I was talking with the first one. I was like, OK. And then I got a second opinion from the other two <laughs> doctors that were standing next to him. And they're like, yep, that's what you would do. <laughs> So I had heard the name Bible cyst before, but I did not know that story. No, th that's real. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, obviously the online like medical sites and stuff don't t tell you not to do that because you could hurt yourself. Sure. But, then, uh, but also all of them, like there are tons and tons of people out there saying their doctor literally just picked up a book and hit them in the wrist and popped this thing and it was fine. That's awesome. So did one of them hit you with a book? No, well, so there were no books at hand at this bar we were at. Uh, also, oh. I wouldn't want to do it while drinking or while they were drinking. Um, so, but you have to hit it pretty hard, apparently. Um, so I like finally worked up enough courage to like lay my arm flat on my desk and hit it with a really heavy book at work today. Uh, and now it's like, I don't know, maybe it's recovering. I don't know. It feels slightly different than it did before, but I can't tell if that's just because I hit it really hard and hurt my hand. Yeah, I was going to say, does it feel different because you need to go to urgent care because you broke oh, no, your wrist? Oh, no, my wrist is fine. Like, if I've, In fact, I've broken this wrist before, so I know what that feels like. Uh, it doesn't feel like this. How many breaks slash uh, dislocations have you had in your life? Uh, that wrist is a good one, and then my thumb when I was a lot younger, and I think that's it. Oh, wow. You and I came out pretty clean with only three between the two of us. That's That's not bad. You only have one? Yeah, I broke my collarbone when I was like 15, and that's the only bone I've really... I think I've broken some toes, but I just kind of moved on with my life when I did it, so I don't really count that. I mean, what? Your toes, like, working still? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're working. I don't. I feel like, you know, if you break them and you don't set them back, don't they grow back weird well i think that with a hairline toe fracture i think the best thing that they can do is just like wrap it and then either you wear like a not a shoe for a while or not mm -hmm. gotcha so i just kind of moved on with my life they continue to function and not be swollen so okay yeah solid yeah yeah i broke a um <laughs> all right well this is a dumb story i'm gonna tell it now uh <laughs> i broke my wrist uh the only real break you know uh that i had was uh falling out of a desk uh in in high school or sorry in like middle school 
And like, you know, it was one of those desks with the arm, you know, oh, like uh-huh. the desktop. Uh-huh. And I was like rocking on it and I tipped the desk over and it landed on my, my wrist. I was literally, gonna, yeah, you like guillotined your wrist. Yeah, it, it, but like, you know, the desk, it was my left hand that broke. So it was the, the desk fell the opposite way from the arm, but the de- like the desk hit me anyway. But most people probably don't know is that you're a southpaw. Yeah, I'm left-handed. Yeah, so you probably got out a lot of homework from that. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, that was the disappointing part. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was um, not, not a good time. My handwriting was really, really bad for a while. Oh, man. <laughs> I had, like, this this thing that I could slip over the cast that was, like, this molded piece of plastic that either my doctor found or someone found that could, like, hold a pencil. So it was like trying to write with, like, taping a pencil to your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get any you don't get any, it's like your hand is like forced to be held out straight and then tape a pencil to the side of it and like try to write with just your arm it was not it was bad <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching my daughter try to use a fork yeah i bet i bet yeah that's i felt like a kid that didn't know what they were doing sure. <laughs> oh uh, man well mine wasn't very exciting i fell off a motorcycle and snapped my collarbone in half okay yeah that's some um, that's the thing that happens to people that fall off motorcycles. So. Yep. Cool. Pretty exciting. I am on a new laptop this week, JJ. Yeah, Andrew, how'd it go? So you, you made the transition from the previous laptop to a similar laptop? Yes. So I went from a 2012 MacBook Pro, which was the old style uh, with a CD drive in it. And uh, it used to have a hard drive. I had swapped it out for an SSD. Mm-hmm to one of the newer but not newest MacBook Pros, 2015. Okay. So that makes this a lot thinner. It doesn't have a CD drive, uh, and it's all solid state. Like the board, the battery, the the SSD is all integrated. Mm-hmm. So you can't really do anything to it anymore, but uh, it's a lot faster, and it's got USB 3, which the old one did not. Yeah, USB 3 stuff is nice. Yeah, and an HDMI out. Which the yeah. old one did not. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, the transition has been okay. Like trying to organize. I, I've always used the migration assistant on my laptops. So it just sort of moves stuff over and I've never looked at it before. Uh-huh. And this time I specifically chose not to because I, um, after talking to you a couple times, uh, found a way to download a USB of the Apple OS and wipe the drive. And then I wanted to make sure it was uber clean. So I moved everything manually so i'm still kind of dealing with <laughs> with trying to organize i don't know eight computers worth of stuff that has just sort of migrated my entire life mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, so i think you know it's one of the things that i do like to do when i build a new system is uh and i, I express this to you and, and it doesn't in your case here it doesn't this doesn't transfer exactly because you, know, you can't like do stick a new hard drive in this, right? Because that's not how it works. But usually what I would do is I take the old hard drive uh, and I transfer everything onto like an external drive and I bring that external drive over to the new computer and and use it as the second drive Mm. in my new computer. And then the new one just starts fresh with just the OS and everything. And then that old drive is just the backup of stuff uh, so that I still have everything important on there, but the new OS is nice and clean and shiny. Um, and I guess that this is kind of your your version of that. Yeah, in a way. Um, it's stopping me from passing the buck again, though, which is kind of nice. Yeah, like, you know, you just build up stuff, right? Like, do you need that term paper from early in college that you wrote that you've been saving and pulling along in your My Documents folder for 12 years or whatever? Bro, I got stuff from middle school in I here believe still. you. I believe you. And, like, the answer to that is no, you I've don't. Got at least two copies, I think, because I'm going through it slowly, of my entire iTunes library. I've got, you know, like, stuff like that. Like you definitely don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> like, one copy is maybe not needed. Yeah. Two copies is definitely not needed. <laughs> so, Double, especially if they're on the same drive, because that's just redundant. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's all on the same drive now. Um, and on the previous laptop, I had two drives in it, because mm-hmm. I used the CD bay as a drive, but... Yeah. Anyway, so we're on a new laptop. Um, having switched to the laptop, I lost my ability to make my some of my old programs work. Um, so we're going to try Audacity from now on. 
on. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to be asking you for some tips there, buddy. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to help. Uh, I have been using Audacity to record this uh, audio the entire time. In some cases, uh, the file that has been uploaded uh, that you all heard was edited by me. In most <laughs> cases, it's Andrew. But in some cases, it was me uh, using this program that we will now both use, Yeah, I guess. It's a pretty popular program with students, I've heard, actually. Because um, it's free, and free is the magical price <laughs> that everyone loves. <laughs> It'll be hard. It'll be hard. I've been using Adobe products for a little while now. so um, Yeah, I will say their UI could use some work. Yeah, well, again, free is free. Yep. But and when my programs break because they just don't work anymore, that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I guess this is a little kind of an apology in advance in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it won't, won't be too bad. I'm excited. It's a nice, shiny new laptop. It's got a cool new case on it, and it should last for quite a long time with USB 3 and Thunderbolt on it and SSDs. And... I will say that my favorite thing about USB 3, now that I have a new phone, is that plugging your phone into a USB 3 port, it actually utilizes the extra power that can come out of a USB 3 and like my phone charges way faster. I'm just happy that I'll be able to access my two terabyte photo drives a lot quicker. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to some video game stuff since people are probably bored hearing about laptops and broken arms. Yeah. <laughs> some new cards came out this week, JJ. Hearthstone. Yeah, they've been revealing things at a rapid pace uh, on their on the assumption that they're attempting to hit some kind of early December date for this thing to come out. Uh, there has been some cool stuff that has shown up, Andrew. They've been going through the the Grimy Goons gang. I saw that uh, non... What do you call that? Non-class? So the neutral. Neutral card. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. word. Yep. Uh, that takes a card from your board and switches it with one in your deck. Yeah. That's not a good card, but it is an interesting idea. I don't know if it's not a good card. You could put Reno Jackson back in your deck, dude. Uh, you could, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, you could. Um, so, the, again, it's a six-mana card. So, like, you can't play Reno and then put him back in your deck immediately so that you get two Renos, right? Or, you know, or two of whatever. So the cost kind of limits you there. The stats are really bad yeah. for a six-cost card. Um, but the effect is is potentially powerful. You can um, couple it with... Um, I, the the name? best thing I've seen uh, is like some kind of a YouTube video bait. You know, I want to be on the highlight clips uh, deck is like you run that card, you run Malagos that gives you a bunch of spell damage, and you run like one or two other minions, and then you play the one, you play her, you swap to automatically get Malagos for six mana, and then you OTK them because you have a bunch more mana than you normally would after being playing Malagos. Uh, you know, for six instead of nine. Gotcha. Um, but, eh, the, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a cool idea. Uh, I just don't know at six mana how good it will be. But who knows? Uh, everyone in the Hearthstone world is notoriously horrible at evaluating cards, so... But you could... could you could exactly. barns into this and get like three pretty good cards. That's not how it works though, right? Cuz barns doesn't it gives you a 1/1 one, one copy of a minion and no effects. I know, but then you then you drop that lady and oh, switch, sure. you put switch the 1/1 one, one, one. One back for something else. Sure, and then the 1/1 one, one would become a full cost or a full statted version of whatever the thing was. Yeah, so then you get two yeah. versions of whatever it pulled out. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's not useless. I'm not saying the card is bad, uh, but it's it's definitely interesting. I just don't know how good it's going to be. So, what I hope to see, and what I don't know that I saw so far, is more interesting stuff from this set because the game is just sort of flat in standard, especially. Mm -hmm. Do you think you've seen that? So the one card I want to talk about, uh, which I don't know, you know, again, I'm unclear exactly how good it will be, but at least a card that has a lot of possibilities. It's a two mana two six taunt. Now, uh, just just on that face, that's amazing stat line for two mana. Uh, it's a neutral uh, two mana two six taunt. I think it's called the Dirty Rat, uh, and the it has a battle cry that when you play it, uh, it takes a minion from your opponent's hand and puts it into play. Now, that doesn't sound awesome at first blush. 
Uh, for two mana, you you basically play a relatively sizable taunt, and you pull a minion out of your opponent's hand and put it into play. Um, now you could get hosed by this very easily, right? Like, oh, pulled Ragnaros. My opponent just got Ragnaros for free, and I'm going to lose the game now. Um, that's true, you could. Uh, but if you don't play this card on curve and you wait, you can pull out really critical cards for decks that really need them at certain times when they're not ready for them. So on turn seven and your opponent seems to be a, some sort of Reno mage, you drop it and you pull Reno. Pull, pull Reno, exactly. And so it allows counterplay and interesting things you can do against decks that are, you can tell maybe are holding on to a guy. And, you know, you're not guaranteed to get that guy. What if they have other guys in their deck or in their hand? Sorry, it has to be from their hand. Um, but if you play it and nothing comes out, you know immediately they don't have any guys in their hand. And that's really important, right? Then you're like, oh, I can do, you know, you can use that knowledge to your advantage. Um, it's a really cool card. And, like, you know, if you just play it on curve against, like, an aggro deck, right? Because when it, the minion comes out of their hand, they don't get any battle cry effects or anything like that. So you can really mess up decks that are really relying on those kinds of effects by pulling them out of their hand and sort of negating them, right? So yeah. it, it seems like it's a really good card against aggro specifically, and then also has useful, like it maintains its usefulness late in the game versus like other controlling or, you know, combo based decks. So that's like a really cool card that I've seen coming out that sort of has me excited for the future a little I bit. I do. I think, I think that card seems like it's going to be one of the most influential in the set already. Yeah, it definitely has it definitely has potential for sure. Nice. Um and obviously sometimes you're going to play it and you're just going to lose because whoops, they got you Sarah for free or something. Mhm. Mm but, you know, not every time, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. So, there's still no exact date though. Uh they do have their pre-order up. Mhm. Mm yep. No uh, card back. Nope, no card back this time. It sounds like they were not able to get one together in enough time in order to still be able to offer the pre-order. Uh, also, there's no way to pre-order it except through their website. If you notice, there's no in-app pre-order. Oh. There's no pre-orders on the Amazon store or the Google Play store or whatever, uh, only through their website. So I think I know why they've done this. Hmm. To prevent people from buying it half off with Amazon coins. Yeah, yeah. I imagine that was some kind of issue for them uh, in the past. And so because they're doing it through the website and not the app, they then said, oh, well, we can't really offer something that not everyone's going to know about, right? Like if you only access to the game through the game and you didn't know about a pre-order sure. and it came with a card back, how pissed would you be? I mean, I wouldn't care at all because the card back okay. isn't important to me, but okay. like, I know, okay. I know this makes you very angry, Andrew. So there are people out there like me, JJ. I understand. <laughs> I, you asked me a question. I answered it. And now I'm extending that Extend answer. Extend the you into the metaphysical, man. I did. I did. I just did right now while we were talking. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I would understand uh, why people would yeah. be uh, annoyed. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it, people should be able to order it through whatever store they want. It's really none of Blizzard's business as long as they get the money in the end, right? Mm -hmm. But their stated reason is that uh, in order to meet the timeline to release it before the end of the year, they didn't have time to create a card back and test it and pu push it out to all these stores also. Interesting. Um, so, they didn't, so it's not coming out to the app or anything. It'll just come out with a big patch and then that'll be everything. Bummer. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, if, well. Still need so many other ones, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, Hearthstone looks like it's shaping up to be pretty good. I heard some good and not good things about the Diablo patch coming. Yeah. Uh, so they put that thing out on the, the public test realm. Uh, I have not played it, and I don't think you have either. No, man. I didn't play much this week other than a little bit of Hearthstone and some... Cl I'm getting close on Skyrim, I think... I can probably soon make the push through the final story, although I just got a letter from the Dark Brotherhood. Mm, well, the Dark Brotherhood is a cool thing, usually. <laughs> you said you told me I need to do that quest. It's a it's a good one, I'm told. So, probably have an update on that next week, maybe. 
cool, man. Yeah, you know, it's a it's one of those games that there are people who have played that game for like a hundred hours and not finished it. So if you get to some kind of end point in it, then you're pro- you're probably ahead of some people in <laughs> that respect. What'd you hear about the Diablo pack? Uh, some people sounded like they weren't too happy with it. Yeah, I heard the word homage. Yeah, so I, I've seen video of it now, at least, uh, of people playing in this Diablo mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's apparently only going to be around for the month of January, which seems like a really weird thing to do. Why why limit it based on time? That makes almost no sense as far as I can tell. To get people playing the game. Yeah, but then why take it away? Because... I- then it's not special. It's they're adding in just like Overwatch, right? It'll be an event, and then they'll be like, "Hey, we're going to bring that back in January again." By the way, it's just okay. Well, it'll anyway. be like that for like Overwatch, you know, like the Halloween thing's gone, you know. Yeah, I, I just anyway. So you know, people have played through it. Uh, it just seems like it is Diablo three with a fun pixelized filter on top of it, and slightly worse movement. It's supposed to be original eight directional movement. Is that not yeah. what ended up I, happening? I mean, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I'm. It definitely looked like it moved like Diablo 2 does, where you can definitely tell that there's like, you're facing this orientation or this one, and you're walking diagonally or not, right? So one of the thoughts I had when they announced that was D1's cool, D2's even better, mm-hmm. uh, but... One of the things they said they really wanted to give was the experience of D1, which was like, oh, pixelated and eight direction movement. And to me, I was like, well, what about the other people that wanted like D1, but with current stuff? Well, so this is that, right? You are playing Diablo 3 with a skin on top of it that makes it look like and play a little bit like Diablo 1. But I would rather want almost everything from Diablo 1 but yeah, make no. it look like Diablo and three and function like Diablo three. No, no, it's not. Uh, and it, so the thing that bummed me out uh, based on seeing it is that and uh, there aren't even that many new enemies. There's you know a few, a couple new bosses. The Diablo has a new skin at the bottom, of course, uh, and the the butcher and I, the skeleton king uh, are in it. But they don't look, you know, that they have those three have new looks, but the rest are just just enemies you know Mm -hmm. uh it's not that different it seems uh from playing just regular diablo 3 um and apparently the loot isn't very good either uh it's just you know just some stuff well that answers the question why they said you should do it with a new character (laughs) yes and so he said uh the yeah i was watching uh cryparian's review of it uh he said he went through the whole thing from started at level one and got to the end by like level 36 or something uh, and you get like a cool, uh, uh, cool gem at the bottom, which is supposed to represent the red soul stone, and it has to be stuck into the helmet slot, which is a cool idea. You know how the red soul stone was in Diablo. So uh, there is a reason to play through it. You do get. There are some items that are in there that are supposedly not anywhere else. Yeah, but most of them are not good. Like they're like blue items, transmog items. Probably. Uh, and then like this soul stone, which is the unique reward. So the unique reward you really want is the soul stone. Yeah, it's a gem. And then that's it. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, and I don't know. He didn't, you know, go into every single piece of loot he found either. So hard to say. But it's, uh, it seems underwhelming. I mean, it's D1. It wasn't a very complicated game to begin with. No, it wasn't. But, you know, there was a lot more to that game than I think is presented here. Uh, and definitely, it sounds like once you've done it once, there is no reason to go back. Well, unless you think the gem's good enough to have for multiple characters. Maybe. But you could just blast through it with a high-level character and get to the end, right? I suspect so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to install it to try that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I, if it's as horrible as people seem to make it out as, then I guess I just promptly uninstall it again. I don't know. Is they, I mean, they're trying to breathe life into that thing, but it doesn't seem that it's doing too well. Although maybe it's doing better than Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, I don't know. Heroes of the Storm, that they're trying to push this huge new thing that starts tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It starts tomorrow, Andrew. Yeah. Are we going to say on air here that we're going to commit to trying to do some of it? 
I'm going to commit to doing 30 games before it ends in January. I will complete that, and that way people will know what the experience is like for someone like you and I that do not play much Heroes of the Storm. Okay, have played 30 games. Of 30 Heroes games of the Storm is a surprising them. amount, Andrew. Uh, also, you have to play with a friend. You can't do it by yourself. Well, I know some people. Okay. I'm I'm willing to do this with you, man. I want to. I'll get some rewards. That sounds all right. I don't know if I. I don't know, know if I'll commit people... to the thirty. I'll commit to the fifteen. Okay, you're going to commit to fifteen, and I'll commit to thirty. Sure. And all then right. if I and then if I end up at thirty, also I'll just be happy. Here's what I really need to figure out: is if I can find enough friends to play the thirty games with only playing as Cho Gall. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Cho Gall, for people that don't know, is a character in Heroes of the Storm. Um, that you play as two players, but it's one character. So you play as either Cho or Gaul. Yes, and then, but both of them inhabit the same body. Yeah, it's a, so it's a two-headed ogre. <laughs> one of you gets to move, and the other one gets a lot of cool spells, but you can't decide where you're going. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very silly. <laughs> it's extremely silly, and no one uses it in practice because uh, it's horrible. It's pretty bad. <laughs> It's pretty bad, but it's it, a lot of fun. So it counts as two players on your team too, right? Yep. Like his spells are just really crazy powerful because yep, he's basically two players. Oh, and he has a ton of health, so yeah, it's it seems nuts. I don't know. I'm will. I'm sure it, since you can play versus AI, I don't think we're out there going to be inconveniencing the the world of heroes players too much. Hopefully, no, hopefully not. I, it's amazing. I'm so glad that they allowed people to play versus AI. But the rewards really for smart. this are so good. I don't. I mean, I mean, that Genji skin is pretty cool, dude. The Overwatch skin you get for it is, is one of the cool ones for sure. Take that out of it and just go with the time slash. So like either time or money that you'd have to get to get the five heroes and heroes of the storm. For someone like you and I that don't play that much, we'd never have access to those guys except yeah. during the rotation. Yeah, it's true. Actually, you know, uh, in preparation for this, I actually reinstalled Heroes of the Storm because I knew we were going to try and do this. And I played a game of it earlier today. Uh, yeah, that game's weird, man. It's real weird. <laughs> you know, you to, have to trying forget to get my, Dota. my MOBA legs back under me. And it's just, man, there are just a lot of little things that I liked about that game, Dota, and not, and like it's different. And so it just like bothers me in times when it shouldn't, you know? Hmm. What's like, interesting I can't is... scroll the screen off the side while my hero is on it. Right. Yeah, not being able to unlock the camera. Well, so I ha I have unlocked the camera, but like if my hero is on the screen, I can't scroll my hero off the screen. It it won't scroll past my hero being at the edge of the screen. But you can unlock. Oh, but you can unlock it, but you can't. So he's not in the center it. of the screen all the time. But so I can pull it so it goes off to the side, but I can't pull it, you know, to scroll away from where he is. Can you click the mini map to go away yes. from where he is? Okay. Yes. So if I click the mini map, then it's okay. But then as soon as I, you know, try and do stuff again and he gets back on the screen, he locks me there again. Ah. Really, it's just weird stuff. And I'm sure it's all done for a reason. It just frustrates me at the moment. It's interesting, the reaction that I had last time we played Dota versus the last time I played Heroes, which is a while ago. Like I, I, You haven't played Dota for like six years. Oh, I haven't played Dota <laughs> in forever. But like the the environment feels much like toxic in here's the storm i've never had like people yelling at me that i don't know what i'm doing even though i probably don't know what i'm doing mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that is because it seems like they do a good job of uh at least policing the the chat and stuff like chat is disabled by default if you don't know if, if you don't click in a certain place at the beginning of the game the chat's just off and you don't see it uh which is weird i'd and never so experienced that. I was pretty sure the chat was on. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Anyway, but like that's weird. Uh, and yeah, like I agree with you. There, are people get really mad at Dota, and I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. don't know. Uh, we'll we'll play some of that. We'll see how it goes. You know, maybe we'll feel real old after. But I think we made the commitment, so we're gonna do it. Yeah, we said we were going to do it, so now we're going to have to do it. So people get prepared to hear a lot about Heroes of the Storm and JJ's frustration at why I'm always picking Chogol. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably play it with you at least <laughs> once. I want to see how it is. I never actually played as him except for at that BlizzCon where they revealed him. <laughs> I played him once, and I was like, this is weird, and then I was done. Maybe if our reaction times were good. No. We could be good as him? Unlikely. 
But I mean, you know, we could definitely have fun as him. <laughs> Speaking of being old and having bad reaction time. Yeah. Did you know, I found out today that it's been 15 years since Spirited Away came out. Yeah, you know, I actually saw earlier today on some internet site, someone, they're doing a 15-year anniversary. They're putting it in theaters again. I'm shocked by that. I remember watching that, like, like rushing home with the DVD the day mm -hmm. that, like, we could get it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I remember. It was, uh, I remember the first time seeing it. It was, like, it was really, really good. It just made me I should feel go like... watch that again. It's a great movie. Yeah, well, you better watch it in preparation. I guess Miyazaki's coming out of retirement again. Is this like the fourth time? I third? Every time he finishes a movie, he says he's retired. I don't know. It feels like every time his son says he wants to make a movie, then the father's like, no, I will make a movie. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Isn't he also like kind of really old? I think he's 76, 77. That's pretty old. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, man, the dude is a... Uh, has made amazing movies uh, throughout his career, so if he if he thinks he can still do it, hey, let him try. Yeah, I don't, don't know how you turn down a living legend. No, yeah, he's. I mean, the man is a cult, is a living national treasure, uh, and you know, I'm sure that all the people of Japan feel that way. I would hope. I think they do. I mean, all of his movies break box office records. So, do you have a favorite? Is it Spirited Away? No, mm -mm. no, no. Uh, are you going to make me guess all the ones I can name? Or <laughs> I'll give you, you one. Tell I'll give you one, and then I'll just tell you. Okay. Uh, Totoro. Nope. Princess Mononoke. Mononoke. Okay. That was my next one. It's pretty good. I like Totoro a lot. I don't know why. I don't know. I think that maybe Spirited Away is a better movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, But just my, I think maybe my first exposure to it was Mononoke. Mm -hmm. Like just anime in general. Yeah, yeah. And I went to a screening of Mononoke in like a theater in LA. It was like the only place they were showing it, and a bunch of the actors were there. So you know, like uh, mm -hmm. Scully and oh, like else. the voice talent and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So that kind of probably imparts a lot of sentiment on top of it that maybe sure. shouldn't be there. But I watch it yeah. and I don't find many faults with it. Yeah, I mean, Mononoke is a really, really good Princess Mononoke is a really, really good movie for sure so people should people should check that out but if they've never seen one uh spirited away did actually win an Acad an american academy award so yes which is why i say that arguably it might be a quote-unquote better, better i don't know it is a great movie though uh and you don't really need to know that much about japan to understand it um it's great and you can watch it in english without subtitles for those of you that are afraid yeah it's you can, you know, it, there's the Japanese version with subtitles if you want that, of course. But, uh, you know, if you don't want that, the English version is amazing. Uh, and it, you know, it won, it won an Academy Award. I don't know what else there's to say about that. That's basically the top of the bar, right? <laughs> so, you know, another yeah. beloved franchise. I, I guess that's not really a franchise. Well, it is. I guess Studio I Ghibli is a franchise. In Studio Ghibli is a, is a franchise. Yeah. yeah. All, the, all their work is quality for sure. I'm kind of worried about the Star Trek franchise, dude. Yeah. It seems, uh, Seems like it's been pretty ignored recently. Did you hear about the Discovery showrunner quitting? The show owner? Show show runner. Show runner. Uh did was there a stated reason for this? Um no, he just like was like, I can't do this, it's too much with my schedule, blah blah blah. We are now a month and a half from when they were supposed to be launching that show. Mm -hmm. And then they put, delayed it until like mid year and now it's a giant question mark. Mm. So, yay! Mm. Shows they're real commit committed to bringing that back to TV. It was a web series, so it's not really TV. I was hoping. Yeah, I don't know. It, who knows, man? I'm not. Uh, I was never hopeful for this thing as you were. So, uh, look, I would love nothing better than for there to be a good Star Trek show back on TV. Um, I just really want another Next Generation. I mean, they should just. Do all the episodes exactly the same with just new cast and graphics and? So I was, uh, I have uh, at least two of the the Blu-rays of the Next Generation that they started putting out. I think they've gone through all of them now. Um, 
And the image quality is surprisingly better. You know? Yeah, I know. It's just like one of those things where you look at it now and you're like, wow, the sets are just so bare. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's know? nothing you can do to make up for the yeah. fact that they, you know, shot in certain formats and the special effects what they were what they were. Yeah. And you can't just, you know, you can't just CGI your way to make <laughs> old movies look good. I'm not saying that they need to be improved. Like, I don't care what those ones look like, right? Uh-huh. I will love those ones until the end of time. I'm just right. saying to to prevent a disaster of putting out another Star Trek show, just remake Next Generation episode for episode and we'll be good. Like we know those are good. Yeah, I think unfortunately that kind of show just doesn't work anymore. You know, it Star Trek is is a uh innately hopeful show. Uh, and I think a lot of people aren't in the mood for hope at this moment. <laughs> well, that's pretty evident with that new game that came out. What is it called? Tyranny? Yeah, there is a game that came out uh, on, ele- I think it came out the day before the election, uh, called Tyranny. Uh, and it is a, uh, it's a, it's a game by Obsidian. I don't know if you know the company or any of our listeners know. Uh, they are well, they a company put out that... Pillars of Eternity, so I know They them. did. Yeah, uh, they are a company that primarily makes RPG type games. Uh, they wrote Fallout New Vegas. They wrote uh, or created that game. Uh, they have written, you know, Pillars of Eternity and uh, lots of other beloved RPGs uh, over the years. And uh, the first South Park game, uh, a bunch of random weird stuff. Uh, and they, uh, so this was based on the Pillars of Eternity technology that they created uh they wrote this game which is apparently a little bit shorter than pillars is uh but you know more focused and a uh the story goes that the um the hook is that you play a a uh, i forget the term they have but basically like a judge you're almost like a judge dread type character where you have you're the judge you're the jury and the executioner all in one and you work for this this overlord named cryos who is the the ruler of the world, and uh, he was the bad side. He was the army that was like kind of the evil dude, and he won. Uh, and now you work for him, uh, keeping peace in his land. Fun times. <laughs> yeah. What a world. Uh, what a world. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, it seemed uh, relatively interesting. Uh, I have loved Obsidian Games for a long time, so I'm interested in playing it. Uh, I did read a little bit about it, and they actually said that despite the despicable things you're doing in the name of this guy, right, uh, the Mm -hmm. characters are actually generally likable. Like, you you start to connect with them beyond what the actions that they're taking. And that's the thing that Obsidian does that's great. Like, they're really good at writing characters. And, you know, the various... those, Those sorts of games hinge on whether you can get people that you'd like. You know, they, they, or they get you to like these characters, and then they show you doing them some them doing something horrible, and see if they can get you to justify it in your mind. Right? This that kind of stuff is the the stuff that makes those kinds of games great. Uh, so I really hope uh, that they've done it again, and I'm looking forward to be able to dig into that sooner rather than later, but not immediately. You're still working on Civ games, I think. I am still working on Civ. Uh, the Aztec Empire slowly marches on. Uh, I <laughs> slow was, grind. Yeah, well, you know, look, some some guy declared war on me, so I had to teach him. I had to teach him um, what was up, and he wouldn't cede his capital to me when I clearly had wiped out every city of his except for one. I was going to give him the last one. You know, I was going to be like, look, this, you're not a threat to me anymore. You can keep this city over here. It'll be fine. Just give me these other ones. He said no. So I said, okay. And now, he done, now he's not a problem anymore, Andrew. Oh. Look, I gave him the choice. I tried to be nice. Did you give him the... Uh... The Hunger Games canon salute. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bummer. I haven't gotten to nuke anyone yet, though. Uh, that's my. I built one, but I haven't been able to to transport it anywhere yet. So, so it's just sort of sitting at home. Uh, it, it, it's it's something you can have in your arsenal, like coat rack. Yeah, it's it, it. Once you build them, they're a strategic resource. So I have one. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh yeah, I don't know if that's true in Civ Five. No, it's, it's not. It's definitely so, true in this. So in Civ, explain uh, strategic resources to people. Yeah, so there's there's the, your normal resources, you know, gold and and science and culture and that stuff. 
uh, faith too is one. But uh, then there are these other kinds of resources that you'll find around the map uh, as you build cities and explore and such on. Uh, there are um, resources like uh, horses. There's horses here. And if you want to build guys, you know, cavalry guys, you need horses. Or there's iron. Or more pertinent to this conversation, uranium. Uranium. Right. Uh, and uranium is also a strategic resource. Uh, and, you know, later in the game, you can find it. Uh, you, don't, you won't know where it is for the vast majority of the game because you don't have the technology to see it. Uh, but later in the game, you find the technology to see it. Uh, you can then find it and mine it. And once you have mined it, you gain the ability to build uh, a project, which is allows you to construct a nuclear bomb after you have the right requ required techs. Uh, then there's also a separate project to make a thermonuclear bomb later down the way. Um, and then you can build those things. And once you have built them, it adds them to your strategic reserves uh, up in the, the top. You know, like uh, your nation has four iron and six horses and two nukes. And then you can then take those bombs, I assume, and load them into planes and bomb people with them. But strategic resources give you, they used to give you happiness. What do they do now? I don't, they don't give happiness uh, anymore. I, so you might be thinking of luxury resources. Oh, I was thinking of luxury resources. That's right. Those are That's also right. on the map, but they don't, they don't show up at the top bar as something you can do something with. They're just there uh, and they give your each of the cities a little bit of happiness. You used to be able to trade strategic resources. Can you trade your nukes? I don't know. Uh, I haven't tried yet. Uh, I'm also far enough ahead in technology that I don't think anyone else in the world has them. Ah. Yet. So I'm. it's unclear if I could get one from someone else via a trade deal. Also, most of the people don't like me because <laughs> I'm very warlike. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have to try another game to find that out. I guess it doesn't matter so much if you're the only one with nukes, huh? Yeah. Uh, also, I know that using them incurs a very big warmonger penalty, and people are really not going to like you once you start using them. So, I, I, uh... who could? Uh, of course, who would like someone that uses nukes? No one would. That's a bad idea, Andrew. Yeah, nukes in general. Are... It doesn't. It doesn't go good most of the time, based on history. So. <laughs> There's, this is too, it's getting too loaded. <laughs> it's too, getting too real. Uh, you did something else this week that I want to talk about because I heard about it Okay. last week. Oregon Trail. Yeah. Not a video yeah. game. No. There's a card game out. A board slash card game. Like living card game or like... No, it's, it's a box. Card? It's okay, a box cool. card game. Cool. Uh, and I, my fiance is actually the one who who really has wanted this for a while. Okay. Uh, and it, it is based on the Oregon Trail Apple II, like, old computer game. So you busted this thing out, huh? Yeah. So it, apparently it's only sold at Target, which is super frustrating. I know we mentioned this maybe a little bit on one of the podcasts before. Um, and so, like, there's, it was just sold out everywhere, and we couldn't find it. Um, and she was in Target for something else one time, and she found it was like, oh, my God, and immediately bought it. Uh, and we finally got around to playing it this weekend. Uh, and it is hard. <laughs> we died. The game was pretty hard too. If you ramped it up. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think the, I, the, the lesson we learned is that really it says for like two to six players, but like, it doesn't really mean two. Oh, it's one of those where you're getting too many of the bad cards because there's not enough people to spread them out. Yeah, so like it, the rules booklet is could use some work, so we went online and watched a video and some stuff, uh, which, which helped a little bit to kind of explain what was going on. But the the gist of it was that the game is really like, it seems like you you should start with because because the the resources that you get to start with are the same if you start with two through four. So there's no if you just start with two, you're just handicapping yourself. Right. That makes sense. It just makes it harder. So you should play with four at least. And maybe that means each of you plays two hands uh, or or you double it up and do some something like that. I don't know. Um, we tried doubling it up and it seemed like that made it maybe a little too easy just because it was really easy to have everything you would need. It's interesting that they didn't have separate rules for less players. So th there are rules for what happens if you go down to two people 
from a higher number. But there's not rules for just starting with two. Huh. Not separate rules for just starting with two. Wacky. Yeah, interesting. But the game is pretty cool. Uh, and if you remember, uh, definitely remember that the uh, the old computer game was hard. Uh, and most of the time you didn't make it. And they even make that clear in the rule book that you're probably not going to win. You know, by getting to the, the end of the trail. Most likely what's going to happen is you're going to die. That was uh, pretty and, common when I played as a kid. I don't know yeah. if it would be common now as an adult. But I think I would that there's assume just so. so many random things that can go bad. Uh, yeah. It's just you have. It's just not likely that you'll be able to make it. You like take the safest way across a river, and everybody gets swept away. You're like, wait, right, you just what? die. Yeah. So the, so they have that uh, in this game, right? Uh, I'll explain uh, like kind of a, some basic ideas. There are trail cards, and then you have supplies, and each person has a hand of both. You get five trails, and and I think it's five supplies, but more or less depending on the number of players. Uh, and then every turn you have to either play a trail card or a supply. And the supplies are played to fix things or in response to stuff, calamities that happen. And the trail cards are the thing you do to move yourself towards the next goal. Does uh, that which, put you both on the same trail or do you have your own trails? So everyone is other? working together. Ah. So it's, it's a cooperative game against the deck. Oh, okay. That was not clear. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I should have made that clear. At the beginning, they have you write down your name on the the list of of, uh, of survivors or uh, people on the wagon train, and then you erase them as they die, and you flip it over, and there's like gravestones, or you can write an epitaph for them. It's like, <laughs> kind of funny. They give you a little marker or a dry erase marker. It's pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, and there's you know, so you'll be going down the trail. You'll you'll put down a trail piece, and it says you know draw you know draw a calamity. Uh, the trail pieces look like black. Uh, with green, like green trails, like like you're looking at an old monitor, you know? Oh, who'd have thought when you said yeah. Apple II, they, they stuck to it. Yep, they really did. Uh, and then you'll pull out these, they have a, this deck of Calamity cards, and you'll pull one, and I'll say something like, oh, your wagon tongue broke. Uh, before the round ends, someone needs to either fix the wagon or your oxen all die, and then you can't move again until you get oxen. Uh, or you'll flip a trail card that has a river on it, and you have to roll a die. And if you roll even, you cross the river, and it's okay. You roll odd, you lose your turn, and the next person has to roll. Um, so, so you know the, that kind of stuff. You know, you're playing, uh, and you're trying to move down towards the end of the the trail, uh, which is, uh, I guess, determined by how far apart you set the initial two cards. Again, the rule book is kind of unclear on, on some of the rules. Huh. It's just like it says, place about three feet apart, and then you place these cards end to end until you connect them up. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, it was a fun. It's like if you have memories of that old game, uh, it was a cool thing, and I don't think it's that expensive. So this sounds like a way better version of like a party game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you're joking around and having a good time, it's not like the most serious game. There's not tons of strategy. I mean, like you could just, one of the cards you'll flip over. It just says you got dysentery. You're dead. Like, sorry, that's it. You don't have any choice. You pulled a card that kills you. you well, stop. so you better live fast, and that way, you, in case it happens, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, get your trailing as hard as possible. <laughs> so yeah, it, it seems cool. Um, you know, I, I don't know. We'll need to try it sometime when we get some more people in a room. Uh, we can we could play with a few more people. Yeah, get a real sense of the game as a as it probably was yeah, more meant it, to it, be. And it's definitely not that complicated. Um, like the rule booklet is just like you know one page front and back. Maybe it should have been three pages. Three pages, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or they could have used a little less graphics, a little more text. Well, a little or graphics and text that were put together to make some sense. Yeah, or like a video showing like a full playthrough instead of just some guy explaining the rules. Mm -hmm. um, that might have helped too. Just because like there's enough questions where like every, like enough times where you're like, but okay, so I know what the rules say, but like how does it work with this one, one random card since it seems to do something opposite to the rules? And I know the rule is you always do what the card says because that's how those kinds of games are designed and they even have a rule that says do what the cards say. But like it... When it seems to like break fundamental rules, it seems kind of weird. So, anyway, you know, 
card games are weird sometimes. Card games are weird sometimes. I I miss card games in a weird way. Uh, I mm-hmm. think we've had this conversation before. Obviously, like, you know, it's it's tough. You, you don't have the time to do, like, collectible card games or yeah. living card games, especially when you don't have a stable group of people. So this is a good way to... That and things like uh, Flux and stuff are kind of good ways to still feel like you're playing card games, mm-hmm. I guess, a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, this is really, you know, not complicated enough that you could play it with kids or you could play it with, you know, a group of adults maybe who had been imbibing a bit. Um, you know, if they were of the, the time where they remember that, maybe they would enjoy it a little more. Seems good. Nice. Should we do our weekly complaints about fantasy football, or did you win all your games, so you're just going to talk about how awesome things are, and I'm just going to sit here sullen in silence because I played all the wrong players, slash my team suck. Uh, I won two of my three leagues. Um, the league where I'm in last place, I did not win, but not really because of... I mean, yes, it's, it was my fault, right? Like, on that league, in that team, I have five pretty good wide receivers, and, you know, it's a... I choose three because I get two in a flex and I chose two of the three that were good, but my third one was not. Uh, and the other two on my bench were, so I screwed up. Um, I don't know. You know, uh, I was in it until, uh, the Sunday night game when Russell Wilson decided to play, uh, unlike every other game he's been in this year. And then I lost. So I don't know. I'm not that mad about it. Um, but you know, it is what it is. But the thing I am mad about Andrew uh, is Alshon Jeffrey. Let's talk about him. You know that guy? Uh, Chicago wide receiver? That's correct. Yeah, he is the... in. Th- uh, sorry, I should say he was the wide receiver one for the Bears because he was suspended today for the use of performance-enhancing substances. Now, uh, you know, uh. as usual, they issue a statement saying, oh, I, I care about what I put in my body and I was supplement didn't know it had this thing and I, I got to take responsibility anyway, blah, blah, blah. Suspended four games. Um, well, do you know what is four games from now? That's the, that's the, the playoffs, Andrew. Uh, so, so he can't be used until the playoffs, which means there's no point in having him on your roster anymore. Uh, because if you need to make the playoffs, you can't afford to carry dead weight. <laughs> True. Uh, now I'm out of it. I think in this league, uh, being in last of a 10 person league. Uh, I don't think there's a chance for me to come back with the number of games I have left, but I can definitely spoil other people's chances. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to kick Alshon Jeffrey to the curb uh, and find someone better. But the thing that makes me the most angry about this, Andrew, you wouldn't know he was taking performance enhancing substances based on the way he's been playing. He's sucked all year. You know who needs some performance enhancing drugs or at least needs to get moved off the freaking do not drop list is DeAndre Hopkins. Mm. Let me not- read let me read you DeAndre's little score chart here. Okay. Game one, eleven points. That's all right. All right, yeah, sure. Game two, seventeen points. That's real good. Game three, five points. Alright, that's not good. Game four, half a point. Okay, that's low. Game five eleven. That's back. Game six seven, not great. Game seven three, that's low. Game eight four, that's still low. Game nine four, that's low. This is a first round draft pick, JJ. Uh huh. You know who my second round draft pick was? Who? Take a wild guess. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley. Yeah, I know you've been complaining. Uh, and I just want to interject. Um, you know the quarterbacking situation in in Houston changed this year. Uh, and the person who was throwing it to him was Brian Hoyer. Uh, and now is Brock Osweiler, who I think we can definitively say is worse. I am so happy right now that he is not on the Broncos roster, earning the amount of money he is on the Texans roster. Yeah. He's, uh, he seems bad. I don't think he's bad per se it, do, it doesn't I mean, he's look not, like okay, he's okay he's not a bad person but no, he's I, not a good quarterback compared to the people they had before something's missing over there and i and something's not clicking i don't know if it's him or if it's him and the wide receivers or or the, or the coaching or who coaching, knows something's not clicking all across the board yeah. uh his vision definitely seems to not be there uh, yeah it's it's problem 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think there's any receiver on that team that's any good. John Elway proven right again to not mess around with players he does not deem worth certain amounts of money. Mm. I mean, he he had a line and he said, "All right, well, you're over my line. I'm not going to pay it. So go have fun in Texas." Yeah, I mean, he's getting paid, so I'm sure he's having enough fun. Sure, sure. Yeah, but uh, that's my. Um, you know, that's my rant. Uh, I'm doing all right in my other two leagues, so I'm pretty I happy. I just I can't. But everything's falling down around my ears in both leagues. I don't think I have a chance at the playoffs in either one anymore. I got beat. I was I had lost before the end of the 10 a.m. games. Man. In our league together. It was over. Did, would you Just because your opponent got so many points or you got nope, so few? because we were tied and I didn't have any players left. All your players played in one game. Uh, no, they just slot. all played in the morning games, and then I had 60 points, and he had 60 points, and then I ended up down 60 points. Yeah. Yeah, you usually want to diversify your, your times, if possible. I don't know if the times matter as much as the teams matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. I, all right, I'm taking a look at your lineup here. Yeah, these are not necessarily people you want to have as starting players on a team these days. Yeah, Carson Wentz has not been good in well, several Derek weeks. Derek Carr is my leading quarterback. All right, so that's a that's a pickup. You just had to get someone. Yeah, Got I it. Didn't have a starter this week. Yeah, Freeman has not has been very very inconsistent. But yeah. that other guy looks better than him, and that's why he's sucking. I don't know anything about the Rams, but I'm pretty sure they blow. So having two Rams players is not a good not a good look. Pretty terrible. Ty Montgomery just didn't do good. Uh, yeah, I mean he's not great. Yeah, it's not a not a great team you have assembled here. Nope. Not great. It all comes down to Gurley in both drafts, man. Yeah. I you got you hosed know, hard. I I guess I could have told you. Um the you Rams told me good, what? That the Rams weren't gonna be good at the beginning of the season. That's why I didn't draft a single player on them in any of my leagues. And yet last season he was amazing. Yeah. I don't know. There's no way to pick. Or you avoid players like Melvin Gordon who who don't get a touchdown all of last year. In the last two years. No, Melvin Gordon was only a rookie last year. Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so doesn't get a touchdown his entire rookie season on a team that arguably looks like it's going to be worse the next year, and then all of a sudden he's like a 30-point-a-game magnate. Yeah, best running back in fantasy this year because of the touchdowns. I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Um, I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I think you are a scientist. You're not a footballer. <laughs> I feel like you're just not. A Definitely not a scientist. I'm definitely not a scientist. Let's be clear about that. I'm an engineer. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, it, fantasy football, as with real football, is a lot of <laughs> shooting, and uh, you know, we you shot them bad this year. Uh, I did. I shot. I shot it all bad. Yep. All right. Well, uh, let's give some people some social meds. Yeah. Well, you know, if people wanted to email us and complain to us about their fantasy football leagues, they could send an email to podcast at weweregamers dot com, which is a website that you could visit uh, at weweregamers dot com. It's out there. There's our podcasts on it, and you could download them and listen. Uh, you could subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. And you could leave us a review about how great we are and how many of the stars, the number five, you like. Uh, that came out really bad. But anyway, just give us a review. It really does help. I'm not joking. Uh, we have an Instagram account where we posted a bunch of cool pictures from BlizzCon uh, and saw some of the beers that we got there and stuff. If you want to check those out, our Instagram is we Were Gamers, uh, And you can go to Facebook where we post stuff. Uh, which is facebook.com slash we were gamers and our Twitter account is at we were gamers. So you can just follow us on we were gamers on pretty much anything and uh, you'll find us hopefully. All right. Well, I would say let's go play Heroes of the Storm, but I'm not going to waste the day before we have to start <laughs> playing the day. So let's get out of here and Overwatch. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we could do a couple rounds. That'd be a fun. Time.